Hey guys, Hybrid here with a character bios for Godzilla, or Gajira, or Gazira, or however you want to say it. Um, basically, I decided to do this one because I wanted to change the pace. Um, lately, I've been doing a lot of Marvel and DC ones, obviously. Specifically, I think a lot, I've been doing a lot of Marvel ones. And, you know, I just want to do something else besides Marvel or DC. I'm going to do some image ones coming up soon. Obviously, Valiant, Dark Horse, um, other non-Marvel DC ones, but I thought... With the new Godzilla trailer, if you guys don't know this, I'm a massive Godzilla fan. Uh, when I grew up, I loved watching Godzilla, I loved watching Gamera, I loved watching uh, King Kong, even though they were like all part of the same family of Kanai Kaiju, like not the same uh, publishers, obviously, or not publishers, um, distributors, obviously. You know, it was so, I, I love seeing him, uh, Rodan, all of them. So, like, obviously, I'm, I believe, I, I really want Monster X in the upcoming film. Or, um, you know, I, honestly, I just want Monster X because I always thought Monster X was kind of cool, just based on appearance. But we're probably not going to get Monster X from the get-go or some of the much more fan-requested monsters until a sequel later on. But anyways, that's not what this bio is about. This bio is about the what appears to be the, the official origin, at least what's carried on throughout the decades for Godzilla origin-wise. Because obviously there's been various incarnations of him. Uh, this is focusing primarily on the comic book version, even though you will see some slides that aren't from the comics, just due to the fact that the comics don't always cover the origin. They do little, they mention them, which is why I pieced it together kind of from, because he's been in various comics. He's been in Dark Horse, he's currently in IDW, and he's in he's been in Marvel, so he's been around a bit. And yeah, so let's begin. So about 70 million years ago, uh, in the Cretaceous period, I think that's how you say it, there was a large dinosaur. Now, there's various dinosaurs, and I know I misspelled dinosaur. Sorry, I'm you know typo, whatever. Um, but anyways, the species is called Gujirosaurus. I'm never gonna say that again. I'm just gonna call it Godzilla species. But anyways, it had a very unique adaptation of surviving and swimming in aquatic environments. So basically, that means it can live in aquatic and non-aquatic environments. So very interesting there. Uh, this allowed it to um, swim to various different islands in it, the region it lived in in order to get its prey. Now it lived in the South Pacific area so there's obviously a lot of islands there to give you a good idea of um, you know, the distance needing to be traveled. Also this picture here is not Godzilla. I just you know, I found it and it kind of looked like Godzilla a little bit. Maybe a pre mute Godzilla so I was like alright I'll put it in there. So when most of the dinosaurs went extinct, the Godzilla species survived in the South Pacific Oceans in remote areas not regularly, you know, journeyed to by people. Uh, you know, in the process, the species adapted even further to its environments, gaining a high tolerance to heat and radiation, which will obviously come into play later. Throughout the next few centuries, the Gojirasaurus started to dwindle in population. Um, during World War II especially, the last remaining member of its actual race was injured, uh, going to the island of Lagos, and it, it stayed there for a while to heal, and at the time, nuclear tests started being conducted on Lagos. Exposed to further nuclear radiation, the last remaining Gojirasaurus experienced a major mutation. Now, remember, his the species in general was very resistant already by this point to heat and radiation. So instead of killing the creature that ended up becoming Godzilla, it, or dinosaur that ended up becoming Godzilla, it more just further mutated him to a much bigger extreme. So the last remaining Gojirasaurus became something else, which ended up becoming the King of Monsters, AKA Godzilla as we know him today, as you can see in that picture. Now, it's a very common misconception due to the 90s film that Godzilla is a mutated iguana. He is not a mutated iguana, he's a mutated dinosaur technically. So remember that, um, don't trust the 99, 98 film I think it was, don't trust the 98 film with Ferris Bueller as your history for Godzilla. Now abilities, uh, Godzilla has superhuman strength, speed, durability, regeneration, senses, atomic breath, and he is, he's pseudo amphibious. Now by superhuman strength, speed, durability, regeneration, obviously he's much larger than people he's the size of tall buildings thus he would be stronger now his body in general reptilians are quite durable like 
crocodiles, dinosaurs, uh, especially. So that's kind of implied regeneration wise in comics and also the media. He's commonly been seen taking blows, very, very powerful blows, and just brushing them off. As you can see, he's just going through buildings as if they're nothing. And buildings aren't nothing. They're very durable and they they hurt when you go into them. I'm pretty sure, you know, I haven't personally trampled through a building, but you know, just judging by, you know, touching a building, it seems pretty durable and hard to go through, especially without injury. Now, regeneration, he always bounces back. He always wins the end of his fight because he always heals from the beating he gets and triumphs at the end. That's part of Godzilla's character. Speed kind of goes into his, you know, height. He's just so tall that he moves around very quickly, at least compared to humans, which is why it says superhuman or posthuman, whatever. Anyway, his senses, as a reptilian-based creature, his senses of things such as smell are heightened. Compared to us, also as a mutated creature, they are much more superior than, you know, our senses. Atomic breath is quite a, kind of a trademark Godzilla has. Uh, basically, usually, as you can see in the top right picture, the spikes on his back, kind of on the spinal um, area, they kind of glow a bit, and he releases this kind of beam of you know atomic energy very it's, it's basically think about like heat vision or atomic vision uh that hyperion and superman have respectively think of that but concentrate in your mouth as a beam of energy so that's kind of how that works any pseudo amphibious which you know basically that means he can survive very long time for a very long time underwater breathe underwater you know underwater is just as cozy to him as on land even though he doesn't have gills that are seen, so I, I'm assuming it's part of his mutation, but he's commonly associated with the water, so there you go. You guys might be wondering, where is the recommended reading? For this one, due to the nature of the character and how much he's traveled, and there really no issue of Godzilla builds upon the character. If you want to know the character's history, it's really in the movies. So I skipped the recommended reading, because you can pretty much pick up any Godzilla comic and get a grasp of the character he's just so popular and you know because of that they don't the comics don't really feel the need to explain the character that much so i hope this helps you guys uh, comment below if you like this uh, you like the non-marvel dc character bios I, I really hope this helps you guys get an idea of the character the upcoming movie will be an origin story too so we'll see how it changes from this origin but yeah comment below your guys thoughts on it um don't forget to subscribe comment and like and I'll see you guys later.